The best and worst draft grades all in one video. What more could you possibly ask for? What more do you want from me? The 2021 NFL Draft is behind us. So how did your favorite team fare? Let's dive right into the draft grades for all 32 NFL teams. Arizona Cardinals, A-. Solid work here by the Cardinals. They had to go defense in round one, and they came away with do-it-all linebacker Zayvon Collins out of Tulsa. Arizona also landed another weapon for Kyler Murray in round two when they drafted Purdue wide receiver Rondell Moore. He should be a big-time contributor out of the slot and in the return game as well. Atlanta Falcons, A+. Atlanta just couldn't pass on a generational talent like Pitts. He alone elevated Atlanta's grade here. But we also love the Richie Grant pick in round two. The Falcons had to do something on defense there. And finally, Atlanta got excellent value in round three when they took Michigan offensive tackle Jalen Mayfield. Baltimore Ravens. A plus. All the Ravens ever seem to do is ace the draft. The main goal was to get another playmaker from Lamar Jackson. Mission accomplished. Minnesota wideout Rashad Bateman should fit beautifully in Greg Roman's offense. Odafe away was a great value pick with the number 31 selection. Baltimore needed to address the defense after losing Matthew Judon and Yannick Ngakwe in free agency. The fifth round selection of Sean Wade could very well be the steal of the draft. Buffalo Bills. C plus. Gregory Russo is a boom or bust pick, but something tells us Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier will get the most out of them. Carlos Bashman Jr. was worth taking a chance on too, given their need for pass rushers. But we're not sure if the Bills needed to go with offensive tackles, Spencer Brown, and Tommy Doyle with consecutive picks in the middle rounds. They had other needs at corner and linebacker. Carolina Panthers, B-. Nothing wrong with the Jays' horn pick. The guy will be a stud, but why not take Patrick Sertain the second instead? At any rate, the South Carolina product fills the need. We loved Carolina's next four picks because they all address major needs. Chicago Bears, A+. Trading up to get your franchise quarterback will always lead to a high grade. And the Bears did just that by trading up with the New York Giants to get Justin Fields. But there's more. Oklahoma State offensive tackle Tevin Jenkins somehow fell to them in the 39th spot. And they doubled down by taking Missouri OT Larry Borum in round five. Cincinnati Bengals, C-. We know Jamar Chase will be a superstar, but I hate how the Bengals failed to properly address the O-line at the draft. Jackson Carmen was a huge reach at number 46 overall. Kudos for getting Burrow another playmaker, but will he ever have time to throw to him? Cleveland Browns, A+. The Browns defense already got a lot better in free agency, and then they added Northwestern corner Greg Newsom II with the number 26 selection. Good luck throwing against them now. I still have no idea how projected first rounder Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa fell to the Browns in the number 52nd spot. The Notre Dame linebacker will be a future superstar alongside Miles Garrett. Dallas Cowboys, B. Defense was a priority for the Cowboys heading into the draft, as they used their first six picks on that side of the ball. Getting Micah Parsons, 12th overall after trading down, was a giant win for Jerry Jones. Dallas did reach for Kentucky corner Kelvin Joseph with a number 44 pick. We loved their work in round three. They came away with three potential starters. Denver Broncos, C+. Patrick Sertain II is the guy you want when you're facing both Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert twice a year. Javante White has Pro Bowl potential. All the running back may not be their biggest need with Melvin Gordon still on their roster. The Broncos addressed their need for a linebacker by getting Ohio State product Baron Browning in round three. I'm just not sure why he took a pair of safeties in round five. Their secondary is deep enough. Detroit Lions, B. Panay Sewell was the best value pick of this draft. Somehow the Lions got him seventh overall. Detroit wisely used their next three picks on defense, although Levi on Wuzurike was a giant reach at number 41. Green Bay Packers, B minus. Lots of folks wanting Green Bay to go with a receiver in round one, but just look at the secondary's performance in the NFC Championship game. Quarterback help was needed, and they found a potential gem in Georgia's Eric Stokes. Having lost all-pro center Corey Lindsley in free agency, the pack found a hopeful replacement in Josh Myers with the number 62 selection. Finally, with the 85th pick, the pack took a receiver in Clemson's Amari Rogers. Green Bay addressed three giant needs here. Houston Texans, 
D minus. The Texans already had limited draft capital, and they went and wasted their first pick of the draft, 67th overall, on Stanford quarterback David Mills, who they'll probably end up replacing when they get the first overall pick next year. Michigan wideout Nico Collins was a decent find in round three, but they had to trade away more of their limited draft capital just to move up and get him. Just when you thought their days of throwing away draft picks were over, Indianapolis Colts, C+. GM Chris Ballard had to be thrilled when Quiddy Pay fell to them in the 21st spot. However, Deo Odeyingbo was a giant risk of a pick in round two. He tore his Achilles in January, so who knows how much he'll play in 2021 and how effective he'll be after that. SMU tight end Kyle Granson, the Colts' third round choice, should contribute every now and then in Frank Reich's offense. Jacksonville Jaguars, A+. Getting Trevor Lawrence alone led to a high grade. We never loved taking running backs in the first round. But Travis Etienne she produced nicely with his former Clemson teammate. Georgia corner Tyson Campbell was a great pick in round two, and Lawrence will enjoy their other second round pick, as the Jags took Stanford offensive tackle Walker Little to bolster the O-line. Kansas City Chiefs, B. The Chiefs did very well with their limited draft capital they had. Linebacker was a giant need, and Casey got Missouri product Nick Bolton with a number 58 selection. Not bad considering he was widely projected to be a first rounder. The O-line was also given some reinforcement in round two, with the selection of Oklahoma center Creed Humphrey. Even Patrick Mahomes was happy with that pick. Las Vegas Raiders. C. This was a Jekyll and Hyde draft for the Raiders. Even after reaching for the likes of Cleland Farrell, Henry Ruggs, and Damon Arnett over the last few years, the Raiders still didn't learn their lesson when they took Alex Leatherwood at 17 instead of trading down to get him. That was the Jekyll. As for the Hyde, we absolutely loved the Trayvon Mowrig pick in round two. The best safety of the 2021 class will greatly improve this horrendous pass defense. Los Angeles Chargers. A plus. Based on how the offseason has played out, is there anyone happier than Justin Herbert? The Chargers addressed the offensive line once again by drafting Rashawn Slater with a number 13 pick. Suddenly that O-line looks like one of the NFL's best. Taking Asante Samuel Jr. in the 47th spot clinched an A plus for the Chargers. They needed a corner after releasing Casey Hayward. Los Angeles Rams. B. For the fifth straight year, the Rams didn't have a first round pick. That method is clearly paying off for them, as they just kept finding late round gems. Not sure how many of these Rams picks will be starters, but wideout Tutu Adwell could do great things in Sean McVay's offense. South Carolina linebacker Ernest Jones and Texas A&M defensive tackle Bobby Brown III were solid finds in rounds three and four respectively. Miami Dolphins, A+. With their first pick, sixth overall, the Dolphins reunited Tua Tungavailoa with his former Alabama teammate, Jalen Waddell. If these two can reestablish their connection, it'll help the sophomore quarterback take a big step forward in year two. The Dolphins also came away with Jalen Phillips in round one. The explosive Miami pass rusher fills a giant need on Brian Flores' defense. Minnesota Vikings, A+. Wow. The Vikings traded back nine spots and still came away with Christian Darrisaw in round one. Kirk Cousins had to like that. You like that? And the selection of Ohio State guard Wyatt Davis. What Cousins won't like, however, is the selection of Texas A&M QB Kellen Mond. But you know what? Competition is good for an inconsistent quarterback like Cousins. We love what Minnesota did here. New England Patriots. A plus. A new franchise quarterback in Mac Jones? Check. Getting Christian Barmore to bolster an already scary defense? Check. Continuing to build your D-line by getting Oklahoma defensive end Ronnie Perkins? Another check. Bill Belichick's last few drafts left a lot to be desired, but this one will go down as one of his best. New Orleans Saints, C+. We questioned some of the picks, but the Saints did address their biggest positions of need. So a C+, feels like a fair grade. Houston defensive end Peyton Turner was a reach at 28, but the Saints have hit on most of their early round picks in recent years. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Ohio State linebacker Pete Werner and Stanford corner Paulson Adebo. Well, they fill some needs. Could Notre Dame product and fourth round pick Ian Book be the quarterback of the future? New York Giants, A+. We normally wouldn't be huge fans of taking another receiver given the Giants' depth at position. Was too talented for the Giants to pass up on. He's going to help Daniel Jones tremendously in a make or break year. Not sure how Aziz Ojulari fell to the Giants at number 50, but there's another explosive playmaker for Joe Judge's stingy defense. And UCF corner Aaron Robinson joins a great group that's already led by Logan Ryan and James Bradbury. Beautiful work by Trader Dave. New York Jets, B+. Only time will tell if Zach Wilson pans out, but the Jets had to take second overall. His skill set is too good to pass up on. Unlike many analysts, we're actually fans of trading up for USC guard 
Elijah Vera Tucker. He and Makai Becton give the Jets two potential franchise cornerstones up front. As for the defense, Auburn safety Jamin Sherwood could find success in this system. Philadelphia Eagles, A. They had to get a receiver for Jalen Hurts, and the Eagles managed to come away with Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith. If that didn't make Hurts happy enough to begin with, what about the selection of Alabama center Landon Dickerson in round two? We also love the pick of Louisiana Tech defensive tackle Milton Williams in round three. Another potential week one starter there. Pittsburgh Steelers. C. We'll allow taking a running back in round one on this occasion. Najee Harris is a future star, and the Steelers had to fix the ground game. Harris helps the Steelers in their rapidly closing Super Bowl window. But they reach for Penn State tight end, Pat Freermuth, at number 55 overall. Good on them for taking two offensive linemen in center Kendrick Green and Texas A&M tackle Dan Moore Jr. But Pittsburgh should have addressed the O-line early. Seattle Seahawks. C. Seattle only had three picks because of the Jamal Adams and Gabe Jackson trades. Dwayne Eskridge could flourish in this offense. Was another receiver really necessary? That said, Oklahoma corner Trey Brown, the number 137th pick, could be another steal for GM John Snyder. San Francisco 49ers, A-. minus. They got their hopeful franchise QB in Trey Lance. We expect him to do great things in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Notre Dame guard Aaron Banks, Ohio State running back Trey Sermon, and Michigan corner Ambry Thomas all fill out glaring needs as well. Solid job by John Lynch and company. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, B. The defending champions continue to build the D-line by taking Joe Tyron, in round two, Aziz Ojulari or Christian Barmore would have better picks, but we'll see. Kyle Trask was a worthy investment in round two. Bruce Arians is the quarterback's whisperer, as we've said, and he'll get to learn behind Tom Brady for at least a few more years. Tennessee Titans. A. If Caleb Farley stays healthy and reaches his full ceiling, this will be one of the best picks in franchise history. The selections of offensive tackle Dylan Radunes, linebacker Monty Rice, corner Elijah Molden, and receiver Des Fitzpatrick addressed a glaring positional needs on the roster. The Titans had a number of holes, but they look to have filled at least a few of them. Washington football team. C+. We really wish the football team got a quarterback in round one. Kentucky linebacker Jamin Davis was a solid alternative. The front seven just got even more scarier. The O-line was another massive need, and Washington addressed it by taking Texas tackle Samuel Cosme in round two. As for North Carolina receiver Diami Brown and Boy State tight end John Bates, they both could be week one starters. How would you grade your favorite team's draft? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, we're on everything. Go find us, go subscribe, go follow. If you liked this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day's a new video. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.